Jane, you remember fun, right? You seem very jolly, Basil. Hmm? You seem very jolly. Jolly? Yes, jolly, sort of happy. Oh, happy, yes, I remember that. No, not that I noticed, dear, no. I'll report it if it happens, though. Well, sure you do. You know, it's that thing AAA releases haven't been since 2007. The thing that causes Yahtzee to break out in hives in and around the same bodily orifice that generates his opinions. And perhaps no modern title since 2010's middle market sleeper Deadly Premonition better exemplifies this long dormant antiquated attribute from gaming's bygone glory in all its unrepentant batshit splendor than Earth Defense Force 2025. I mean, sure, at first glance, it's a small market third-person shooting explosion fest with a budget roughly the size of a dust mite's dick on a cold day, but at second glance, well, that's exactly what it is. And that's fucking awesome. Yet to describe this game as a shooter is to also do it a measurable disservice. For one thing, in a practical sense, many of the game's weapons do not shoot anything at all. Unless, of course, vagina throttling unbridled badassery counts as a fucking projectile. In a wholesale inversion of modern game developer logic, EDF 2025, like each of the five games that preceded it in this series, is a game defined not by what untoward jaggy bits it's shorn from the core formula to placate a double-wide audience that no longer fucking exists, it's a game defined by what's been added to the formula, coupled with the series' trademark incomparable motherfucking lunacy. This game is regoddamnediculous in the best possible regard. The literal embodiment of everything great about Japanese video games and the antithesis of their latter-day downfalls. What's that? Kojima's releasing Metal Gear Solid 5? And it's 30 seconds long? Here, have 85 fucking missions in your Earth Defense Force 2025 campaign for $50. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I do the cha-cha like a sissy girl. Japanese games don't suck. Hideo Kojima, Motomu Toriyama, and Kaz fucking Hirai suck. And the games they produce and or fund and or sign the fuck off on suck by association. Fact! Like every Earth Defense Force title before it, it's a case of excess having a three-way with bombast and decadence. Why? Ingve Malmsteen will now explain precisely why. No, remember, less is more. And I always said, how can that be? How can less be more? It's impossible. More is more. You're A1 fucking right, maestro. Now, for the love of all that's holy, apply that principle to filling your bathtub with salon conditioner and dive the fuck in head first. It looks like a thumb wrestled with a motherfucking light socket, chief. Bioware, Eidos, Bethesda, IO Interactive, Blizzard, Square Enix. Every developer that has ever removed a third of the original game added two new gimmicky mechanics and had the monolithic heaving rhino balls to call it a motherfucking sequel. Lend me your fucking ears. Less is not more. More is more. Enjoyed having one soldier class in Earth Defense Force 2017? Badass. Here's four more. Like the weapon variety in the earlier titles? Here, you're a walking fucking armory. Go with God. And don't forget your weapons level the fuck up with you. And speaking of weapons, do you recall in my Rageaholic movie review of the 1985 Chuck Norris action classic Invasion USA when I opined the following? <laughs> Let me tell you something, Infinity Ward. If you make an FPS out of this instead of another modern military game that invents new shades of brown, I'll buy 50 fucking copies. Especially if I get to play as Chuck Norris and wield a gun that shoots fists. Well, wish fucking granted. Not only did this game feature the use of a cybernetic motherfucking piston fist large enough to crack Jupiter open like a goddamn walnut, it also happens to be easily one of the most potent items of weaponry in the entire ever-loving game. I say let turbo wimps like the Ranger and the Air Raider have their assault rifles and laser crossbows, because when you find yourself in an impromptu game of rock'em suck'em robots with the iron fucking giant at one one thousandth scale literally punching enemy fighter craft from orbit, You'll be far too preoccupied with nursing an erection so throbbingly large it interferes with local cell phone reception to remotely give a fuck. And while the graphics are a brand of ugly more commonly reserved for members of the English royal family, they are nevertheless a significant upgrade from previous titles in the series. Whereas Earth Defense Force 2017 looks like a goddamn PS2 game, EDF 2025 could easily be mistaken for a late year original Xbox title. So yeah, have a gold star. Which isn't, of course, to say that EDF 2025 is technically unimpressive. Fuzzy textures are fucking no. Witnessing literally hundreds of swarming enemies of every conceivable configuration swirling and reeling above your head with only the occasional dip in frame rate really sledgehammers the fuck home the immutable fact that if AAA developers are indeed being held back, it's certainly not by 7th gen hardware. We live in a 
world where developers manufacture excuses daily and actual games once every four years if everything goes right. I can imagine why software sales are down by over 21%. Pull up a seat beside the Mad Hatter and the Cheshire Cat, folks, because we have officially arrived on the other side of the developmental looking glass. But the entire unifying principle of the EDF series at last polished and harnessed into a blustery tornado of building-sized arthropods, kaiju robots, and flying bitches in stainless steel bikini bottoms is the same principle that began this very review. Fun! Earth Defense Force 2025, especially when played cooperatively with a friend, is mind-blowingly fucking fun. A trait modern games are generating an exponentially diminished supply these days, so lap it the fuck up while you can, Rageaholics. I'm Razorfist. God fucking speed. <laughs>